Let's talk about how to do 8-way animation, not only for moving, but setting up so your attack, idle, and death will also be based off of this direction. Alright, so what I'm referring to here for today's video is going to be this comment where we are looking for... We're going to have eight directional based animation, which you saw in the beginning there, uh, like in an RTS, but we're not going to do this in our RTS project because there are things that I would want to do beforehand, such as setting up the unit selection system first before we tackle the movement. So I'm doing this in its own little project, uh, moving the character towards the location, uh, like RTS, we move the character towards the location and it plays uh, the movement animation, which I was showing you there that we identify with the direction. Yes. Also that if it attacks, stays idle or dies, it plays the animation based on its current direction. All right. Well, we can handle that because the system that I've set up uh, for playing its animation, as long as you follow the same naming scheme, then you should be able to play the right attack, idle, death, whatever, based off of that same direction. All right, now I didn't have any eight way sprites I'm just sitting in my asset folder. So I went ahead over here to itch and I just picked up these punny characters. I'm going to be using, I guess they call them an archer and I'll be using the purple one. All right. So you may have noticed down in the console that I'm actually printing out my direction based off of or printing out the direction uh, with the walk animation. And this is basically the animation that's going to play. Now, all I've done here is I set up a camera. I use a tile map just to put some green there in the background. Uh, our little purple guy is just a sprite. I've moved the texture in there, set up the animation. So 24 horizontal frames, 8 vertical. And I gave it an animation player with, well, to play all of its different directions now i just have the walks here but you could do the idle attack death the same way just make sure you follow the same naming scheme so you see i've got walk down walk down left walk down right walk left walk right walk up walk up left and walk up right so if you wanted to do this with idols for example so for after your character gets to a location you would have idle down idle down left idle down right idle left idle right idle up idle up left and idle up right and you'd follow the same naming scheme for your attack animations and for your death animations and as long as you do that this system should work you would just have to of course put in the conditions for when your character switches from walking to idle or going to its attack and so on but that's all we have here set up it's just our sprite with its animations and if we were to go into our script the script is sitting on my main node in this case so i've got an export here to get a hold of my little soldier guy i've got two variables for my vert and whoring all right that's going to hold on to my vertical and horizontal direction and I'm using these as a string instead of numbers. That way we can use it with our animations. And MP here is just going to be my mouse position when I click. Which of course is a vector too. Right, so I'm using the input function. And I'm just checking that I have not only clicked, but uh, I'm pressing my left mouse button. Right, I'm left clicking. And I'm going to set my mouse position is equal to my get global mouse position. I am then going to get the direction, or in this case, I'm getting the direction too. Uh, I don't need this. Why specifically? I was just using that for testing some things. So we're setting our creating a variable called direction and setting it equal to soldier dot global position dot direction to MP. And this is going to give us uh, between zero and a one or both an X and a Y. And this will basically allow us to know what direction we're supposed to be moving in. Or what direction the mouse click is. 
or target position, whatever you want to call it, is in relation to us, the soldier. Now, what I've done here is I've checked for direction if my direction dot X is greater than whatever my threshold is here. Now, I found 0.1 works pretty well, but that's up to you. You can play around with that. You can make it bigger, uh, smaller, whatever you feel or find that works best for you. I'm just using 0.1. So if direction dot X is greater than 0.1, then we're in the positive direction for sure. So I'm going to set my horizontal or hori set to right. The string right. Else if it's lower than the negative of our threshold, then we're going to set it to left. Otherwise, we're just going to set it to an empty string. So there's no text in it at all. And we're going to do the same thing here for our Y direction. Um, now, I don't know why I'm using greater than or equal to. I can just use greater than there. Um, but greater than our threshold, which means our Y is positive direction. So it's going to be vert. It's going to be set to down. Else if our Y is in the negative direction, then we're setting it to up. Else our vertical direction is just going to be set to an empty string. Meaning we're not clicking up or down. Now for the actual animations and the way it works. So in my process, I've just gone ahead and called my animate function. And what is where I'm passing in a vertical, a vertical argument, a horizontal, and I'm passing in the delta because uh, you'd probably want to actually move your character in here as well. So just in case you want to do that, I passed in delta. Of course, you don't have to. And inside of this animation function, all we're going to do, we're going to get the, I'm getting my animation player off of my soldier. I'm setting my animation. So the animation, in my case, is just purely going to be walk because I'm just, I just have a walk animation. So we're having it to walk plus vertical plus horizontal. So it's going to be walk up right, walk up left, walk down left and walk down right now vertical is an empty string then we're just going to have walk right walk left and same thing with our vertical or sorry same thing with uh oh yeah same thing with our vertical if horizontal is an empty string we're just going to have walk up walk down so you can see just by having it like this our animation is being set uh dynamically based off of the direction that it's supposed to go in. So you can say here, um, if your character reaches its destination, then you would set the animation to idle plus vertical plus horizontal. And then it's reached that destination and you play that animation. And now you're playing the idle up right, for example. Or if your character dies, you can play that death up right animation all right so now i want to make sure that this animation is actually available inside of our library we don't have something weird going on so i'm just going to create a variable called al for my animation list this is a pack string array and we just call our animation player dot get animation list and this is going to give us uh, if we were to click here it's going to give us basically this entire list all the animations that this animation player has And then we're, we can easily just make our check. We'll say if the animation we want to play is available on this animation player. Right. So if the animation is in the list, then we'll go ahead and play that animation. And really, that's all there is to it uh, for doing this. So you can see how this can this one line here for setting up our animation. Uh, can be dynamic and work for whatever situation it is you're trying to go with. Like I said, whether it's for a death, attack, idle, or walking. And the only thing that's really missing here is actually moving your character, which is going to be very dependent uh, on your own as to how your character is going to move, right? Whether you're moving on a 
doing calculations and moving to a point by point system or if you're just moving straight to it anyway i don't want to ramble on but there you go that's how we can set that up and take care i'll see you guys next time all right so just as a quick example uh real quick i went ahead and just do an variable for moving now of course with this you'd probably go off a distance or maybe you'd want to use a variable as well i don't know it's up to you and how you want to design your actual movement uh part of your system um so then i have in my case i just set my animation to no longer loop so when my animation finishes you see we're going to switch to idle plus vert plus our horizontal so when i click down we're going to animate down and then we're going to go into that downward at idle So again, I click down and that'll finish going to the idle there. And if I were to click in the down right, it'll move over there and then he can swap into that idle animation. So you see the system still works. Um, you just got to make sure you keep that naming consistent throughout and then it'll automatically switch into that idle animation or you can set it to use that attack, that death, whatever, because you, you have that down that up, down, left, and right already set up as a string based off of the direction it was moving last. Alright. But that'll do it. Take care. Have yourselves a good one. And I'll see you guys next time.